That was a hit. Yep. to another episode so we've been getting some beautiful warm weather lately and i thought i'd come up to melton reservoir this morning to see if we can find us a springtime yellow belly maybe even a bass so this morning first up i'll be running a 95 millimeter double clutch in black and gold that's gonna be my shallow runner and we have also got size too stumpy but I've got the uh, pimped up lures version here which are a little bit more pricey and the only difference I can really see is the paint job but I thought that looks absolutely fantastic purple and chartreuse green so we'll run that one as well and hopefully we can find a nice yellow belly the thing about trolling is it's not the most engaging form of fishing you just have the rod sitting in the holder as you move along, waiting for a fish to hit the lure. But it's a really good way to cover a lot of ground and it's a form of fishing that I really enjoy. Oh, there's a fish. I wasn't even paying attention. What have we got here? Redfin. There you go, first fish of the morning, guys. Not a bad size, actually. But uh, I think we'll let him go and hope that we might find something bigger. He's eating the uh, 95 millimeter double clutch there. Obviously, he took a liking to it. One thing about these 95 millimeter double clutches, that third treble is uh, make a bit of a mess of things sometimes. There we go, first fish of the day. It's a little guy, he can go back. See you, mate. Good sign. Very, very good sign there. So. Use this to get our self back around. We'll keep going. With the water temperatures only being 10 to 11 degrees on my previous trip, I wasn't expecting to see much on this trip. However, the water temperature had risen to 14 degrees, so I was a little bit hopeful that I might see something. Then this happened. Oh, there we go. That's a good fish. Yes. Well, that's a proper fish that you hit that pretty hard too. What have we got here? I think this might be yellow belly actually. Oh. It's staying deep on me. It's staying very deep on me. Could this be a cod. What have we got? Oh, yellow belly, beautiful big yellow belly that. Oh, what a thumper. An absolute thumper of a yellow belly. Wow, he's a big yellow. In the net, oh yes. Woo! That is a thumper of a yellow belly. Look at that. Beautiful big yellow. I'm 
don't like all these trebles here on this 95 millimeter double clutch at all not at all there we go look at that for a yellow belly guys that is a thumper so solid not the brightest colors in the world but that is a beautiful big yellow belly that oh, i'm so happy springtime yellow belly wow very happy about that so he comes up to the k on gamoku i'll get a measurement on that later and i'll put in the video and tell you how big it is but that's a thumper all right buddy you're gonna go back thank you very much see you later haha <laughs> yes big yellow belly how good's that I am very happy about that. What we might do is another parsley to see if he's got a mate with him. Woo! Big yellow. You beauty. And guys, that was on the 95 millimeter double clutch in black and gold. Gold's generally a pretty good uh, color for yellow belly, so I'm definitely gonna put that back out there and see if we can find another one. Happy days, happy days. I'm really happy about that. Good solid fight out of him. That's a beautiful big yellow belly, that. Oh, there we go, there's a fish. Yeah, it's probably ready. Yeah, little red pin. Have a little ready here guys so there's definitely a lot more activity today that's for sure and there has been in the last month and i've been down here so it's a good sign for the summer he's done himself a mischief with that treble there we go another little guy there off he goes all right guys, so I've been trolling around this morning with these two lures. This one here is a size two stump jumper aftershock. And that was the lure that I got smacked on by the fish the other week and ended up getting busted off. So obviously I had to go and buy one as a replacement. And this one here, which we got the yellow belly on this morning, the 95 millimeter double clutch in black and gold. So they don't actually run at the same depth. They have uh, slightly different depths. This goes down about three meters and the DC runs a little bit shallower, probably 1.5 to 2 meters at a guess. I'm, I'm not exactly sure on the specs. But what we're about to do is something called swapping sides. Now, this morning as I've been paddling around, I've had the bank on this side. So if you imagine the bank goes like this as it goes down, you want the shallower running lure on this side where the bank is, and you want the deeper lure out the other side. But we're about to swap sides with the bank. So because of that, you literally swap around the rods from which side of the kayak they're on. So I'll now have the shallow runner on the bank side and I'll have the deep runner on the deep side. So whenever you're trolling around, just keep that in mind that, you know, obviously whatever side the bank is on, it's going to typically run like that. So you want to have your shallow, your shallow running lure on that side and then your deep running lure on the other side there, getting down into the depth. So let's put them out and we'll keep on uh, pedaling around so we can find another yellow belly. So whenever you're doing this kind of fishing, I personally think that having a sounder is a massive, massive help. Just knowing how deep your lure is going to want to dive, and knowing how deep it is and trying to stay, like let's say you've got three meter diving lures, trying to stay in about four meters to keep them just off the bottom. Having a sounder really, really does help. However, you don't have to have one. You can basically depth sound with your lures. And the way I'd recommend doing that is, you gotta know how, first of all, how deep your lures are going away. Probably not too crucial, it's just a handy to know. And get in real close to the bank and drop the lures out behind the kayak or the boat. Send them down with a bit of line out. And if they start bumping the bottom, you know you're probably a little bit too shallow for that lure. So just sort of then work your way out off the bank a little bit. Just gradually off the bank until your lure stops hitting the bottom. By doing so, you typically would then know that you're just off the bottom. You can't be 100% certain, obviously the sounder helps to be certain about that, 
but you know that you're within the ballpark of where the fish are going to be. So I would recommend having a sounder for this kind of fishing, but it's not something that's 100% crucial. I've caught fishing here on the troll without sounder before. I just find that it does help to know that you're maximizing your chances of actually finding a fish. As I previously mentioned, this isn't the most engaging form of fishing, and you quite often find yourself daydreaming. For some reason, that's always when the big fish hits. Oh, that's a good fish. That's a good fish on the stumpy. Oh, oh lost him. Oh, something smacked that. Oh, damn. Something absolutely walloped that stump jumper then. Oh man. I wonder if it might have been a cod. So he hit that hard and he was going hard. Oh, let's do another trip back around. Let's see if we can find that fish. That was a solid hit. Really, really solid hit. It was more solid than the yellow belly earlier, that's for sure. Well, there we go guys, what an awesome session that was. A couple of reddies, that beautiful big yellow belly and getting absolutely smoked there by something a lot larger. My guess is another Murray Cod, but at the end of the day, the hooks didn't stick, so it doesn't count and it's only a guess. Now, if there's anything about kayak trolling or just trolling lures in general in the fresh water that I haven't covered that you wanna know, just leave a comment down below on the video. If you liked it, please like the video, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Yeah. Mm -hmm.